everyone. Uh, so uh, for this last, uh, this might be your last Rhino video, uh, unless you're interested in 3D printing. So uh, for this last video, we're going to check back in with our uh, sort of um, room example. And uh, we're going to uh, look at assigning materials to objects. Um, so that now that we have uh, lights going, we can actually get uh, surfaces going as well. And in other words, we can make wood look like wood rather than a sort of uh, generic gray surface. So uh, we're going to spend some time with that today. And then we're also going to cover details on how to uh, format your final rendering. So. Uh, as per usual, I'm going to get myself off the screen, so I'll see you in a second. Okay, well, uh, welcome back. Um, I wanted to share with you, uh, before we kind of jump in, uh, a couple of changes that I made to the model. Um, and those changes were made uh, partially because uh, I didn't want you all to suffer through, you know, something that was highly repetitive. Um, and also I made a few changes to just kind of bolster uh, the performance of my uh, of my my model here. Um, so as we know, we have this uh, this chandelier, which is kind of a, it's kind of a thing. Um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty complicated and uh, it's got a lot of uh, if I turn the glitz on, uh, if I turn this glitz layer on real quickly. Um, I went ahead and I got rid of uh, lots of rhinestones. So I got rid of all the little straight lines of rhinestones. Um, and I, I think by doing that, I probably cut the number of uh, gemstones in half or b by at least a third. Um, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit unhappy with the performance lags that I was getting in the last video. So, um, you know, if you're having performance problems, uh, simplifying your model is definitely something to consider. Um, as we get into working with materials, those are uh, another thing that can potentially cause you performance problems. So we'll kind of talk around um, some of those issues as well. Um, but I'm still happy with the way that it looks. Um, if I turn on the lights, um, you know, it looks pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Um, it's still not like lightning fast, but it's, um, you know, it's definitely uh, noticeably better. Um, and so as I, s oh, hello. Do, 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 do. Of course, keep in mind that even though I have a souped up MacBook Pro, um, I'm also trying to record video um, at the same time, um, which is, uh, of course, also kind of like um, has a level of overhead. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to turn the lights off and the glitz off and I'm just going to reposition the camera. Yeah, I just got a little bit off there. Um, so if I reposition the camera, so now I can show you what the lights look like. Um, and of course, then when I turn the glitz on, that's even more um, sort of, you know, stuff to be reflected through. Um, so I'm I put I, the other thing that I did uh, since our last video is I went ahead and finished off all of the point lights. So every single one of these candle objects has a point light associated with it. And um, that light, um, it looks super cool, but it's something that I definitely want to kind of have on its own layer so that I can turn it off and on because it's definitely, um, you know, has quite a bit of, uh, you know, demand uh, on the processor. Um, if anybody's wondering, uh, kind of like, well, what what uh, part of my computer does Rhino use the most? Um, and the answer is it uses your processor and it also uses your video card. Um, so if you have, um, you know, a traditional style workstation um, other than a laptop um, that that has a nice standalone video card, um, if you're really into gaming, for example, or something like that, you'll probably have a great experience with Rhino. Um, you know, because I'm on a laptop that uh, has a decent video card, um, but it's not really designed for like heavy duty 3D rendering. Um, you know, it's in my best interest if I want to keep my, you know, experience and my experience for you all, um, you know, kind of running smoothly. It's in my best interest to kind of keep my forms um, 
in check. <laughs> and so, as I said before, this is like right on the edge of maybe too much um, complexity. So I'm going to turn off the glitz too, because it is a little bit demanding. Um, and pretty much I have everything on right now, except for the floor lamp. We have this extra lamp. Um, the other thing that I did while you were away is I scaled up the, uh, the floor lamp shade. Um, it was just kind of killing me, um, visually, um, and I couldn't handle the, the sort of scale of it. Um, it was offending my sensibilities. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're also going to be, you know, using this floor lamp as a way to kind of explore different textures and, uh, and things. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. I'll get rid of the floor lamp for now. Um, I think the best place to start um, with texturing things would be the table. Um, and so let's go ahead and do the table. Um, so uh, at this time, I can get at the table um, by either kind of, you know, getting rid of some of these um, other layers, or I can just do this kind of direct selection thing where I where I right click the layer and say select objects on layer to sort of select my entire table. Now, actually, um, I guess we could probably, you know, while we're here, we could group it, um, although it's not really fully necessary um, since we have it on its own layer. But um, what we do want to do um, at this time is go ahead and uh, assign it a material. So uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, come into this tab right here, which is called the material tab of your objects thing. Um, and remember, if you're not seeing your objects panel, you can turn it on and off like that. So we're going to go to material. We're going to give it a second. And right now it's set to use layer material, um, which is basically the default material. What is the default material, you may ask? It's this lovely generic gray surface. Um, so we do not want that. We want to give it a kind of custom material. So there are um, ways that we can uh, change the material. So you would uh, go to this drop down menu, click the plus button. And uh, you may notice that it doesn't really have like wood listed um, per se, although we can go to more types. Um, and then it's got uh, it's got some extra extra materials, but really wood is not unfortunately on this list. So so we're going to have to do something a little bit different. Oops, that's another model. Excuse me. So I think what we're going to need to do is instead of a material for this particular thing, we should be able to use materials for many other things um, that are made of, uh, you know, glass, ceramic, metal, those sorts of objects. OK, so we're not able to find the uh, material that we want, which is wood. Um, and so in this case for wood or and this is really a, a technique that you would probably want to use for a lot of things um, you would want to uh, activate this plus uh, thing and instead of importing or using something from the material library which is definitely the easiest way to do it um, you want to go ahead and go to the custom tab and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, you know, think about some of these settings. So um, the color is really irrelevant because we're going to be using an image to dictate the color, um, an actual texture image. Um, the glossiness is something to think about. Um, also reflectivity, uh, transparency, those things are all, we're going to look at those in other um, examples. Um, and we will see. Um, in the case of wood uh, in particular, um, it's neither transparent nor reflective. Um, it could be potentially glossy, so we'll, we'll, um, we'll look at that in a second. So then under textures, um, what we're going to use is a color, uh, what's called a color map. So um, we can go ahead and just uh, activate the color map by clicking on there. Um, and uh, it says click to assign. So um, it's going to ask us for a JPEG image. 
Now I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, look in my folders um, and I'm going to pull some things out of my library. Um, but of course the other solution is we can just uh, download things from Google, which is probably what you're going to be doing. So uh, let's go ahead and um, load up Google. Okay, so um, I'm here uh, and I'm ready to start looking for some textures. So I'm going to try to find, uh, if I Google hmm, wood texture, it's going to come up with like literally everything you could imagine related to wood. It's kind of not specific enough. Um, so adding the word seamless or tiling to it um, is a really great way to um, kind of get exactly what you want. Um, there is a difference between just a picture of a texture um, and um, <clears throat> a texture that's actually going to work um, kind of in 3D space or in uh, a sort of situation where it's being tiled. And so um, I'll tell you what you don't want probably is a super high resolution texture. Um, it can be useful uh, for modeling, um, but it's not necessarily great for um, for keeping your system performance nice and uh, quick. So I'm going to just um, kind of look at the full page here and see what see what's what. So this looks really beautiful, but this would be a terrible texture to use for digital. Uh, in a digital kind of tiling situation because see how it has this these light spots on the uh, on the sides when we tile this that's going to create a pattern um, so uh, that's not such a great texture to use uh, for a sort of 3d modeling context um, neither uh, is well this one might repeat um, it probably does um, but it's got a lot of contrast, um, so I would kind of avoid something like that uh, as well. This one actually, this one looks really fun. We could try this one out. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll probably go with a, a texture for the floor as well. So we probably want to use this prompt to kind of shop for a texture for the floor. Um, so something like that would be fantastic for the floor. Um, so let's take a look at one of these that maybe we could think about using. I'll use a gray, uh, a gray one because it's just a little different. Um, so this is perfect. It's about 900 by 900 pixels, as you can see. Um, so because it's uh, relatively small, my, uh, my advice to you is to keep your uh, tiles or your texture tiles under uh, a thousand pixels um, and if you're having uh, significant performance problems after you add your textures you could consider uh, you know editing them in photoshop and scaling them down even further um, because uh, you know what you may uh, want to understand about uh, well this one is 2000 by 2000 pixels so um, i'm just going to go ahead and save image as and I'm going to stick it in um, maybe a new folder called textures for this project. Um, just like when I'm working in wood, um, or when, excuse me, when I'm working in Premiere, um, I like to, uh, you know, have all my sort of uh, accompanying files with uh, my, uh, my project file in a folder. So we should go ahead at some point and do that. So um, we could also uh, download the kind of preview version of this, which is a little bit lower res. Um, and uh, that would be OK, too. Um, let's go ahead while we're here and grab. Um, this is interesting. This is very like looks like Honduran mahogany. Um, so I'll grab this one just so we have it. And uh, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and grab some floor uh, tiles because we will eventually want to tile the floor. So um, 
When you're looking for texture tiles, this one's fanta looks fantastic. Um, when you're looking for texture tiles, um, anything that sort of like references game design or 3D, 3D rendering, you kind of know that it's going to be um, pretty decent. Um, so this one looks like it's uh, might be a, a little on the high res side, um, but I guess the benefit of the floor is that because it's sort of zoomed out, we're only going to need to uh, tile it uh, a couple times. So um, you can see this one is a PNG. So um, if uh, Rhino should accept it, um, but if it doesn't, um, we can always just save it as a JPEG in Photoshop. Okay, so I think we're kind of good for a little while on the wood texture thing. So let me go ahead and um, assign that texture. So I think we wanted to do the, the gray wood, which is kind of cool. Okay, so we assign it, there it is. And we are pretty much, uh, you know, we have textured this now. Um, so there's a lot of complexity um, in terms of like, you know, what direction the texture is facing. Um, and so we could potentially look at this individual um, surface where the texture is running kind of long ways and we could flip it. Um, but to be honest, it doesn't really bother me that much. I think we may end up doing that on the floor. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, find a texture for the floor. Um, so if I go ahead and um, select the floor, which I've done, um, I'm again going to want to make this a custom texture. And uh, I can go here to the color map. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use that floor thing that I did before. Oh, wait, stop the presses. This is huge. This is like 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels, 21 megabytes. I mean, that's nice and everything uh, if you want something that large, but um, we really don't want uh, that many pixels. So I'm just gonna real quickly um, open it up. Oh, hey, hello. Um, open it up in Photoshop and derp, open. Um, and just scale it down real quickly. So uh, I'm just gonna go to image size and, um, oh, let's make it like, you know, something something much smaller. So, uh, and really what you're looking at here is the pixel size, the resolution is kind of irrelevant. Um, so this is fine. Um, so we can just click okay and uh, save it and be done and move on with our day. So um, now I can go ahead and assign it and not worry about having it clog up the works. Oh, it's only one megabyte now, that's significantly smaller. Um, and great, so um, we can see here that um, a couple things are happening. It looks like um, it looks like it's really quite large, um, maybe larger than it should be. Um, so I mean, I think it's plausible that you could have a wood floor that has planks that are, you know, like looks like they might be, you know, six or eight inches. Um, if I were just to kind of eyeball it. Um, so we could leave it like this and that would be just fine and you know you would still get an A. Um, but if you want to know how to uh, scale this down, uh, um, you would uh, definitely be able to do so. So if we want to scale this down, um, you need to double click right here, which is not, I will grant it, not the most uh, intuitive thing. Um, it opens up this content editor and you can scroll down and um, in there we have the option to you know, make a bunch of edits. Um, and where we want to actually make the edit is um, over here where it talks about the repeat um, 
so I'm pretty sure that if we make this something like 0.5 and ah, that is the opposite direction. So let's try for two here. Um, and so you're basically telling it to repeat more, um, which would kind of affect the, the scale of the object. So instead of, you know, just having one thing that stretches across the entire object, you've got uh, something that, um, you know, goes across um, in, a, in a much more focused way and in a much smaller way. So you can apply that. So, so we can actually go back to the tabletop and flip this texture if we really want to. Um, so we can also use the rotation function here and just rotate it 90 degrees. And now we're looking at the so-called long grain or this sort of like, you know, horizontal across the table. And I mean, come on, it does look better. Um, that's sort of the way that, you know, wood uh, is supposed to work. So uh, we could probably do that on the legs as well. It looks like we're looking at the short end of the stick um, on the legs, but I'm not gonna get into that uh, kind of detail uh, right now because uh, it's just not um, kind of productive. Um, so if you're interested in, in editing some of those details, now you know how. Um, so the next thing I need to really think about, uh, and this is gonna be our last custom texture, uh, would be the walls. And so uh, I also need to go uh, out to Google and find a texture for the walls. Um, you, you may be asking yourself, what do you mean you need to find a texture for the walls? Um, and I guess I would say, well, I mean, look at your walls. Uh, they have a texture. Um, it may be a subtle texture, but um, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely a texture. Um, so you can find, uh, you know, paint, uh, paint textures, um, online. Um, and so, uh, here we have some ceiling textures. Oh, let's see. Seamless white paint texture sounds good. Um, this actually looks perfect. I don't want it to be like, like a plaster texture, you know, that's a little too intense. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's 1600 by 1600. And um, let me just double check really quickly. Um, Um, as you can see, I have several textures folders because uh, we do this fairly frequently. Um, and I also use these textures for my own projects. Um, so I am gonna jump into, uh, into Photoshop real quickly and just uh, scale this down. So uh, <clears throat> particularly for this paint texture, um, I'm gonna want this to be scaled down because it's gonna be repeated a lot. Um, so I think maybe just cutting it in half to uh, 800 by 800, or maybe even uh, we could go even lower 600 by 600 because it's really, um, uh, if I think about, this might be like a 12, 12 inch by 12 inch block and our walls are really massive. Um, so this is gonna be kind of all over, um, all over the place. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, both of the walls and just put that white texture on there. I'm not, uh, for the walls, I'm not really gonna think about them being, you know, reflective. I guess I could, I mean, there's such a thing as glossy paint, um, but it seems like maybe not, not super necessary since we have all this um, kind of bling that's gonna come from the chandelier. So, ba dum dum. Okay, now here's another uh, scenario in which we need to kind of edit the texture. Um, and the reason is because this texture is just way out of scale. Um, in other words, um, remember how I said one of those textures should probably take up about, uh, you know, 12, 12 inches. Um, it looks like this texture is doing something more like taking up 12 feet. Um, so again, we just want to come down here to the... Uh, 
the actual uh, link to the image and double click it. And then if we go down here, we can shift the number of times that it's repeating. So we can, um, I mean, let's put this up high and see what happens um, if we make it repeat like 12 times. Now, the trick there is that we want it to still be visible. Um, so at this point, it may be kind of, let's go ahead and apply it. So yeah, that's okay. Um, it's still, it's definitely visible. Um, it looks a little bit darker than it should, um, but I'm willing to kind of like um, suspend judgment on that until we get the lights uh, fully on. Um, so there's the walls. And okay, so now we're gonna kind of be within the realm of um, kind of predetermined surfaces. So uh, the first thing I wanna show you is the chandelier frame. So if we, well, actually, let's bring the floor lamp back. And I'm going to go to the top view real quickly and um, sort of select some of the stuff. And I'll grab this, um, this stuff on the top, too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, yeah, I don't, I was going to th thinking about grouping stuff, but I really don't need to. Um, so this is kind of not, like not really where I want it right now. If I think about just like, you know, um, the sort of scene itself. Um, so I think probably I want to move the lamp like somewhere, you know, back here. Um, just so it's not taking up quite so much space. Um, it looks like I forgot um, an object, so I'm going to kind of zoom in and grab this little thing here before I make my move here. All right, and you can see the lighting situation changed a little bit because um, we had a point light inside of it, which I also did not take uh take with it so to speak so i'm gonna go ahead and just stick it back in there um and these look like some other little straggly pieces these are just curves so i could pretty much at this point i could probably throw these away excuse me so annoying Yes, please. And get rid of those. Okay, so um, we've got the sort of base of the lamp, which would be certainly, you know, something that we could for sure um, give a material to. So let's start here. Let's go ahead and think about the base of a lamp. Well, I was thinking that we could make it, um, you know, kind of like a classic brass. Um, so if we come in here to the material uh, thing again and we go ahead and just use um, uh, one of the stock materials um, and by the way we can choose from one of the materials that we've already defined so if we wanted to make it made out of wood we totally could they're they're down here now um, but i don't i want this to be brass so let's go to metal and now um, it's going to kind of like uh, ask us for different, um, you know, parameters. So we want to come up with a color and it has kind of stock uh, colors that you can choose from. So you can choose from a brass color and then just be done with that. Um, the level of polish right now it's set to like 85%. Looks pretty cool. I mean, um, very poly it's very polishy for sure. Um, so we can also um, give it a bump texture, which I actually don't want to do because I want it to be smooth. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, with metal, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, in addition, uh, let's go ahead and do the lampshade. And the lampshade, I think, um, we really just want it to be kind of translucent, right? Like, like a paper or a silk lampshade. 
So um, we could probably just uh, use the default material, to be honest, and just edit it. Um, so here, if we go to default material, it's sort of um, set right now to plaster. Um, I don't think there's anything that I'd rather use. Um, we could set it to plastic. Um, that would be like a nice, um, maybe a nice look. I don't, I don't want to go so far as to give it like the texture of silk, like that woven texture, um, because I just think it's going to be too much texture and you'll never notice it. Um, but um, if we go to plastic, it's going to open up some um, opportunities for us in terms of the fact that we can access the not only the color, but the reflectivity, the transparency, and that kind of stuff. So in this case, I want to take the transparency and I want to move the transparency to, you know, meh, like 30% maybe. Um, the reflectivity can kind of be in the middle. And you do get a small preview um, of your choices here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what that transparency is so hopefully going to do for us is it's going to kind of enable us to sort of see into the, the this point light. Um, so we'll, we might come back and take a look at that later after we have a chance to render it and see what it looks like. So the sort of remaining, um, the remaining thing here is the chandelier. And we don't want to go crazy um, with materials for the chandelier because, as we have remarked previously, um, you know it's got a lot of um, it's got a lot of uh, sort of complexity, and it's you know just going to maybe slow us down a little bit. So what I can do right now is go ahead and select the frame. Um, so I'm going to right click. Um, I have the frame on a sub layer. So select objects on layer. And um, at this point, I could probably uh, go ahead and just use one of the metal materials. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So if we go to the color, um, just for variety's sake, I'm going to not use the brass preset. Um, I'll do something like maybe uh, silver. Why not? Um, and uh, I think that most of these presets are OK. Um, I may want to add uh, a little bit of reflectivity. Um, or I might want to even take some away. So that's the kind of stuff where we can kind of go ahead and just maybe leave the settings the way they are. And then when we come in uh, after we render it, we can be, we, you know, we can make some judgments. So also we have the glitz, which um, in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and so now we can see the chandelier real quickly. Lovely. Um, so when you use these reflective materials, by the way, um, they will actually reflect materials within the, or they'll reflect, ref reflect objects within the scene. Um, so they, the idea of introducing reflectivity can be kind of, um, demanding, uh, again, to your processor. So if you're looking for a way to economize, um, making things less, less reflective, um, will definitely help. Um, so we're going to see what we can get away with in this case. Um, and I'm kind of moving into um, select the glitz here. Um, okay, so uh, da -da -da -da, select objects on layer. There it is. So I'm going to do something that is like the sort of reflective metal can also be incredibly demanding, um, but I think we'll be OK. Um, we're kind of living dangerously a little bit. Um, we can use either the gemstone uh, preset or we can use the glass preset. I actually think it makes more sense to use the gemstone preset in this case um, because it's got some really fun uh, presets that are sort of specifically for 
cut glass shapes. Hi, beach ball. So we knew this was going to take a minute. Okay, type diamond. Well, we can probably just stick with that, although you can see it's got like all these other fun presets. Um, diamonds are my best friend. Um, so let's see. Uh, we have uh, this is pretty much ready to go. So before I go further, um, I think I'm going to leave the glitz on for sure. You may notice right now that I have the chandelier lights off. Um, and uh, when we go to make our rendering, which is what we're going to do next, um, that is going to be uh, sort of um, made. Uh, and there's a setting to use lights on lights that are on layers that are off. Um, and we have that setting enabled right now. You can change it in the in the um, settings. Um, in fact, uh, while I'm kind of just you know repositioning things, um, I may go ahead and disenable the the glitz again because as you can see, it's like. Um, so, let's go ahead and maybe do that just while I'm doing some basic kind of composition of the rendering. Sometimes I just get lost in the spinning of the beach ball. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm gonna turn the glitz off and we'll be in kind of a somewhat better situation. I'm gonna change, slightly change the proportions of my, uh, my scenario here. Um, so basically I just want kind of, you know, everything to like fit comfortably in the, in the arena of the, the window. And uh, I'm going to take a quick trip to render settings right now. So if I go to the render menu, um, I'm going to look at the render properties. And we've looked at the render properties before. So right now we have the render properties set to be um, a very small uh, viewport. So we can actually, um, right now it looks like it's uh, might be actually set for the right viewport, right? So. Um, we actually want it to be set for this this viewport, so we have to activate it. And now you can see it's it's at the sort of proportions that we would expect. It's 1185 by 845 pixels. Um, now you may notice that I uh, asked you in your assignment um, to turn in a rendering that was 2000 pixels, at least 2000 pixels. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make just a draft rendering. Um, and so that's what we've been doing. Um, I'm just gonna scroll through the settings real quickly so that you can see um, kind of what my settings are um, in case your settings might be off. Okay, and scroll back up. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just make what's called a kind of draft or a preview rendering. In other words, we're not gonna maybe make the full 2000 pixel rendering right away because I can tell you with all these lights and you know all of these um, gemstones and stuff like that, it's gonna, it's gonna take a few minutes. I may even pause the video. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and render what we have right now. Even, even this is probably gonna take a little while. Okay, um, that looks interesting. Not exactly what I expected. Um, it looks like I may have missed that setting about using lights that are off um, because we definitely want to preview what these lights are gonna look like. This looks pretty cool though. Um, I 
uh, everything else looks great. Um, in terms of reflectivity, um, I can show you um, in this draft. See that little shadow right there? Yeah, that's that. That's the table being reflected. Um, so let me uh, check my settings again. Do, 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 vendor properties. Use lights on layers that are off. Yes, please. And let's go ahead and um, throw the glitz in as well. Oh, beach ball me. Okay, um, so I'm going to do it one more time and it's probably going to be uh, a completely different story um, if we turn those lights on in the render. Um, I don't know if you can hear the audio quality might not be quite as good because my uh, my computer my laptop fan is just like chugging like a like a little maniac. Um, it's normal. Okay, so we do have our kind of fancy um, fancy lights on now, um, and that's great. So. Um, Um, the reason I decided to do the chandelier is that you can kind of just see how, what a huge impact, um, even just multiple lights can ha at once can have on a, on a space, you know, they really just kind of like have their own presence, right? Um, that, you know, it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, the sort of visual complexity of a scene doesn't have to be made up by modeled objects. Um, you can also just make it up out of lights. Um, and so um, you can see the sort of rhinestones are, um, you know, glinting quite beautifully. Of course, this is a very low quality um, kind of preview of what we're going to wind up getting. So um, I, I feel pretty, uh, pretty okay about kind of just moving forward with this, um, with this um, setup. Um, the only thing that I kind of want to check on is I want to check on the point light that's inside of this lampshade. Um, because it doesn't seem like it's doing a whole lot. Um, so I want to check and make sure it's even still there. Um, and, uh, and then from there, we can go ahead and just make our final rendering. Um, as I said, for the final rendering, I'm probably going to, uh, you know, pause the video um, and uh, just uh, let, the, let the rendering finish. Okay, so that's great. Um, I kind of know what I need to know. Um, so as I said, I wanted to kind of like check on the, uh, there should be a point light in here. So um, I, I might have accidentally deleted it or something like that. Um, I'm going to pause the video um, and uh, do some, uh, do just some small adjustments. Okay. Hi, I'm back. Um, so I did uh, throw a point light in there and you can see now it's like, hello, I'm here. I'm a point light. And it's, uh, you know, casting some light on onto the actual lampshade. So um, we also, uh, I think, uh, just to kind of get the idea that there's m more light in here, um, I may actually um, use a, uh, uh, a spotlight um, or maybe even a what a directional light so um, if I kind of set the directional light at the same place that the point light is at and then um, just push it down to the bottom of the of the lamp or I'm gonna actually activate ortho for a second I can just hit the shift key and it will snap to ortho um, and then it asks for, let's see, a start. Uh, 
Okay. So um, hopefully that'll get some more light kind of like shining down um, out of the lampshade. Um, although I would like to have this a little bit more, a um, little bit further down. That's better. Okay, so just some last minute adjustments. Um, as you can see, I took the chandelier uh, off the screen temporarily just so I can kind of move a little more freely. So I'm gonna go to render properties. I think we're almost ready to make our final rendering. I'm going to go to render properties and uh, the only thing I'm gonna change um, in the render properties it would will be the size. So right now it's uh, cast to be the size of the viewport, which is basically like taking a screenshot. Um, so in here, I'm gonna change the units to pixels. And I'm gonna take the largest dimension, which is the width, and I'm gonna set that to, um, first I'm gonna set this to custom. Hmm. Hang on just a second. Oh, you annoying thing. Okay. Um, don't hate me, please. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down these numbers. I'm going to write down 1185 by 357. Oops, actually, I'm not going to do that because the that is the uh, dimension for the right viewport which is now my active viewport so let me uh let me change the viewport and get back in here okay so that is more like it so i'm going to write down those numbers and uh i hate to tell you all this but i'm going to make you do some a tiny bit of math okay so um the easy way to kind of do the math in this case is um, now when I go to custom, it's going to kind of erase these numbers, which is totally stupid. Um, so I have these numbers written down 1185 by 845. So if I go to custom, that apparently this, uh, this actual thing right here is totally meaningless. That's unfortunate. So uh, I could, uh, you know, obviously kind of, you know, use a calculator. Oh, right now. Okay, so um, little known fact, I am actually bad at math. So 2000 uh, divided by 1185 will give you the sort of scale factor. So in this case, our scale factor is 1.68. So what that means is we can come in here and we can set this uh, to 2000. And we need to take our other number value, which in this case is 845, and multiply it by the scale factor. So times 845 equals 1426. And you will get a perfectly proportioned um, sorry. I'm sure you've felt that way many times about Rhino. Okay, so now we are pretty much ready to go. Okay, uh, under good quality, we probably want to set this to final quality. Um, again, if you're having performance problems or your computer is kind of like choking on itself, um, you may want to consider, uh, you can turn it in at, at good uh, quality. That's totally reasonable. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get this uh, out of here and I'm going to go ahead now and bring my two sort of attention seeking layers out. Gonna wait a second.
All right, so we're ready to render. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, push the button and then I will probably promptly uh, pause the video um, because I'm just kind of preparing for this to be uh, a little bit chunky. Mm hmm. I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And when I when we come back, we'll have a finished rendering oh, like cooking. All right. Well, I have a rendering. Um, I have a high resolution render rendering and um, it took about nine minutes, um, which, you know, for my laptop is a, a bit much. Um, I would say as a general rule of thumb, um, these high resolution renderings can take up to 20 minutes depending on the you know capabilities of your laptop. Um, my sort of rule uh, of thumb is that if it doesn't, uh, if it looks like it's hung up and it doesn't finish within a half an hour, um, maybe that would be the time to think about like force quitting it or whatever. Um, but they can take quite a long time. So um, it is uh, sort of the kind of thing where you may want to um, you know, set it up, let it go, um, and go have a, have a snack or something. Um, so here's the rendering, um, in all its glory. And, um, uh, you can see that we got a lot of, uh, act light action from the chandelier. Um, we also have, uh, just everything is a lot more subtle in these, uh, high resolution renderings. <clears throat> so we have our nice, like subtle, you know, shadows on the floor. Um, if I uh, zoom in a little bit, we can, uh, that's the sort of benefit of making high resolution renderings is that you can kind of zoom in a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would definitely consider, um, you know, making some sort of close up rendering just for myself, for my own artistic benefit. Um, but again, for the assignment, this is really, um, you know, we're looking for um, objects in an environment. Um, so just to kind of uh, recap with that, um, you know, what does your uh, environment look like? Does it have to be a room? No, it could be uh, a van or it could be <laughs> um, a boat or uh, a spaceship or um, uh, some nether world. Um, uh, it could be another dimension. Um, those are all uh, sort of options for this assignment. Um, but uh, I think the, uh, the main ideas uh, are that we want you to kind of think about context um, of the object to what's around it um, and also uh, you know using light and material so um, I am uh, going to uh, let y'all go until the next video so this is pretty much me signing off and uh, I will see you all real soon have a great week bye